Hi, welcome to PeopleToolsTechTips.com. I'm Randy Gronke, and today we're going to talk about using your user uploaded images from your PeopleSoft environment in your BI Publisher reports. So your users have uploaded a lot of photos into your PeopleSoft environment, and now we want to use some of those photos in a BI Publisher document. Well, our problem is that the images are in the People Tools database, and our BI Publisher document is outside of that using XML files. So how are we going to get do that? We're going to do that by moving that image out to a file and then reading it back using the file object base64. Send that base64 string into an XML file and then send that file over to BI Publisher. BI Publisher has FO functions that will read the base64 string in and convert that back to an image to display on the page. Now, there are several technologies that are outside the scope of this video. Those are creating an XML file using the row set, uploading the images into PeopleSoft, uh, uploading the design time images into PeopleSoft, also launching a BI Publisher document from PeopleCode. We have videos of all that on People Tools Tech Tips YouTube site and also peopletoolstechtips.com. What this is going to cover in specific is that exporting out to file of the image, reading back into 64, how to read that image on the other side as a base 64 string converting into an image. Now we're going to see a challenge here that BI Publisher does not like expecting to get an image and not receiving one. For consistency of UI, we're going to have to do something with a null image. Specifically, we don't have the image of one specific employee in our group. If we just do nothing, it tends to mess up the format of the document. It doesn't handle that. So we're going to cover several ways to do that. As always, all the code and objects you see here in our demo that we're talking about is available on peopletoolstechtips.com and also our GitHub repository, People Tools Tech Tips. So let's get started with our demo of seeing a manager's team with photos and seeing how that prints out to a BI publisher. And then we will break that solution down into its pieces and how do we build up to it to insert those images into a BI publisher document and handle the case where we don't have the image. Let's navigate to our demo application. This is just a simple page with the user's info and photo at the top. And the photos and some basic information of those team members directly reporting to that user as per position data. This user has four reports. We have employee photos for everyone except one employee, Martha. For Martha, we're using an image reference on the page showing the PT Dummy Photo Tools image. Clicking the Print button generates the BI Publisher document in a new browser tab. The report looks nearly identical to the page with all the same employee information and employee photos. Notice that Martha's row again shows the PT Dummy Photo in place of her missing employee photo. Let's take a quick technical look at our application. This is a basic page with scroll level 0 and 1. The user's info is contained by the search record at level 0. The user's image is a related display. The user's team is a level 1 scroll area. A simple view returns all the employee data and photo here. Again, this is a related display. Here we see the page structure. X PT3 Team Search is the level 0 record. X PT3 Team View is a scroll level 1 record containing the team's data. These views will also supply all the data for our BI Publisher report. Let's take a look at a more detailed view of the record definitions. Here's the XPT3 Team Search View. It's keyed by Opera ID for security. There is also a long field added to contain the Base64 encoded photo for our BI Pub report. The view is just a simple view using a constant of MRG photo in the employee photo field. We're not actually encoding the employee photo with this view. The XPT3 team view record for the team scroll area is similar. A view pulls in all the data for the page and the same X employee photo field is added to the end to contain the employee's photo. Mm -hmm. 
Let's look at the print button field change people code which generates and displays the BI publisher report. Here you can see we are importing the PSXP XML Gen app package which converts row sets to XML strings and PSXP report Defin manager app package which controls BI publisher. The last imported app package is a custom package that creates and populates a row set with all the report data and images. Here we see the standard variable declarations we've seen before in BI Publisher people code. Here's the special code. This app package generates all the data and returns a row set object given a user ID. Let's look at that app class. This class has one primary method that returns the loaded row set given an operator ID in a string. We also see the two private methods that return base64 encoded strings for employee photos and the dummy image if needed. The load T method creates the parent child row set to hold the data. Remember to create the child row set before creating the parent with the child row set as a parameter. First thing is to fill the parent row set with the user's data. We then loop through each row of that row set. There should be only one. We assign the resulting string of the load employee image method to the X employee photo field. The method's parameter is the employee ID. Here we're getting the XPT3 team search child row set from our current parent row. We're filling that row set with all employees belonging to the parent row operator ID. Then loop through each row of that child XPT3 team view row set and use the load employee image method to retrieve the employee photo base64 string. The last thing we do with this method is return our populated row set. Let's take a closer look at that load employee image method to see what it's doing. It's using the get attachment function to move the image to the file server. Looking at our XE photo view attachment record, we can see it's just a delivered file attachment sub record for fields. The view behind the record makes the empl photo table appear as an attachment table to the people tools attachment functions. The first thing we do is create a fully qualified URL. The file object's name property will give us a known location to place the PeopleSoft image on the file server. Then use the get attachment function with a target employee ID as the key and the URL we just created. If the get attachment was successful, open that file for read using the file path absolute parameter. Then use the file object's get base64 string from binary method to read the contents of that file back as a base64 string. Don't forget the housekeeping. Before leaving, delete that image file from the file server. This commented code tests the base64 string for any content. Should it be empty, it calls the load dummy image method. The load dummy image method works exactly like the load employee image method. The only difference is that the X design image view is used as the attachment source table. This view also uses the attachment sub record. Cont data is the record field with the binary image, but looks at the PS content rec for people tools image objects. Notice the view concatenates all the keys in the one key field of the attachment sub record. We then supply the key of PT dummy photo 0110, which is the concatenation of the keys on that record for our dummy image. Again, push the binary image to a known location on the file server, then read it back using the file object's get base64 string from binary method to convert the binary image into a base64 string. Delete the file for housekeeping and return the string. Let's look at the XML file this created. Here's the parent row and Betty's basic information. And here's the base64 encoded employee photo. Here's the child row set with the team members. Each team member row has their basic data and their employee photo image encoded as a base64 string. Notice down here that Martha's record does not have a string in the employee photo field. Overall, we have an XML file with a complex structure that we could not create with PS Query. This is a smaller, more efficient structure than PS Query produces. PS Query also has no ability to convert images into base64 strings. Here is our basic RTF template for our report. This template does not yet display the image fields. The top grid contains the user information. And the bottom grid is a repeating structure for all team members' information. Let's look at the XML source file that does not yet contain the image information. We see here the parent employee data and the child team members data. Let's load this XML file and see the results. Here's the basic structure of the report. The user at the top with several reporting team members flowing down the page. Let's add the images to the template. 
The XML file we are going to use now has employees photos encoded into base64 strings for all employees. Martha has the default dummy photo encoded. Now our report shows all the employee photos. Let's look at the function that converts the base64 string back into a photo. The FO in-stream foreign object converts that base64 back into a photo. It works much like an HTML tag. We declare the payload type as image slash JPEG. It can also handle PNG and GIF images. The height and width parameters can also be defined here to force an image into an expected size. This value is select line tells the function which field has the payload and any special path information on how to locate it. The function is then completed with the end tag. Let's load an XML file that looks like our final version. It only contains encoded strings for employee photos where they are available. It does not have a dummy image for employee without the photo. Generating a sample report, it looks much the same. But look at Martha's row. We didn't have her photo. BI Publisher handled the missing data badly in the report here, creating a much larger photo area than the other rows. The entire report looks odd, and the last employee's data was pushed to the second page. Let's fix this in the team scroll area by adding conditional areas to the report. And the grid cell holding the image, we created two conditional areas. One conditional area for when we do have data in the employee photo field. And one conditional area for when we do not have data in the employee photo field. The conditional to show the photo test to see if the field is greater than a space. If so, the field with the FO in-stream foreign object function renders the image. The second conditional area tests if the value of the employee photo is less than or equal to a space. If so, the conditional area contains the dummy employee image. As a note, this image is embedded in the template once rather than placed in the XML file possibly multiple times. You have to understand your data, the application, and architecture to know which one is best. Here's the report with the conditional area showing the images for the employee who have them and the default dummy image for the one employee who does not. Let's take a look at the final template. We took that last template and just hid the grid lines we used for formatting. Load the sample data and test the report. We see here our final report with employee photos looking much cleaner. We have everything we need for the BI Publisher report. Images, XML file, and RTF template. All that is left to do is create an XML data source, create a BI Publisher report definition to hold our template, hook it all up to this print button, and we have our BI Publisher report with employee images from the PeopleSoft database. Let's look at that code briefly. Here's where we loaded our data and returned the pipelet row set. Here is where we are using delivered PS XML gen app package to convert the row set into an XML string. This is where we are writing the XML string to a file. We get a fully qualified URL to that file before closing it. We're using the attachment function to pop that XML file to a new tab in the browser for our demonstration reference. This is also a good way to retrieve your XML files when designing your template. Instantiate the BI Pub app packages and retrieve their port definition. Set the data file as the XML file we just wrote to the file server. Process the report. Use the do save now or commit work function to clear the think time functions on the page. Finally, direct BI Publisher package to display the report to a new browser tab. After all that, we have our BI Publish report using user uploaded images from the PeopleSoft database. So there we are. We took an image in our PeopleSoft environment and sent it out to a file and then read it back as a base64 string using PeopleSoft file object. We took that base64 string, put it in an XML file, and then sent that file over to BI Publisher, who converted that base64 back string back into an image for the BI Publisher document. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to our channel, and we'll see you next time here on PeopleTool Tech Tips.